So when Michael sent us uh, his email, so Michael sent us an email saying that he wanted to speak at uh, the IoT Barcelona uh, with Giri. We were thinking, wow, we have too many speakers. Maybe we shouldn't uh, have a, a new speaker. But then uh, with his email, he sent, uh, oh, I want to speak about this and that. And, and actually we thought, wow, this is actually crazy. So I think we, we should have him talking. Uh, at the IoT meetup, so yeah, he will talk about nano mobility and how we will be in 2040 and so on. So, all yours, Michael. Thank you very much, Mark. Thanks for having me here. I'm going to have a lot of slides, probably not a lot of questions, but on the last one, so you can feel free to come up and chat with me uh, uh, over a beer or you know expand your mind even further. I'm going to try to really blow your mind. So that's my goal right now and try to really just freak you out that you want to go to the next generation of building something completely unimaginable today. And now mobility is an era that I've been looking at for a little bit. And I'm just going to be jumping through sides to explain myself where I came from. I've been in this mobile industry since 1992, uh, 22 years, and I've done a lot of work in the industry locally, globally, regionally, standards, bodies, technology, building browsers, SDKs and tools, publishing. I, 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 I've been here for a little bit. and not only been here for a little bit, I've started to look at where futurists think. And I, I don't want to say I'm a futurist, I'm more practical to that. And I want to say I'm starting to see where we're starting to head towards this Internet of Things and the future and wearable technologies. And where, where I'm getting my background from are famous futurists, published authors, published thought leaders, that you should all start starting to glance through to see where this trajectory is heading towards. The trajectory that started, I believe, for me, in 2004. And 2004 represents a special year, not only is it a decade ago, but it's the first time I read from Barcelona that someone implanted an RFID chip, a little chip, to get into a bar, as the bar club, as the pass to get into a bar, they actually would implant an RFID chip, and I believe it was the badge of Bleak Beach Club. I don't even know if it still exists, I don't even know where it is, but it blew my mind at that time in 2004, people were getting implants to go out and have a great time and a great night. At the same time, my daughter was born, 2004, and I thought, when she's my age, what's the world gonna be like? How is she gonna be in our world that we see today or we see projecting out, and what's her world gonna be in the next 20, 30, 40 years? And in 10 years, a lot of things has happened. The trajectory and pace of change in technologies is accelerating beyond our human belief. And it's real, it's not science fiction. It's coming, it's around the corner, and we should start thinking about it now. The projects and ideas and sourcing and, and, and incubators and, and accelerators that you're hearing about today are fascinating. Now how do you leverage what's coming and give that trajectory an opportunity to start today with these great initiatives that you're hearing from and to take a look at the building blocks. The IoT evolutionary path is the internet of people. Sounds simple. I'm going to try to make it really simple to understand. And it's not that I'm a simpleton. I just want to make sure that we understand it's really about people and what's happening in the pending nanomobility era. There are building blocks. The building blocks are here. If you look at them and put a little glimpse of, of trajectory on those building blocks from wearable computing, 3D printing, internet of everything, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, quantum computing, and bio-life sciences. Big mouthful, but it's true. And there's a lot of stuff that's coming out of research that's getting into applied research and it's looking for problems. It's looking for people that have design. I think there's one gentleman here who says, I, I can design an idea, but I can't build it. But they're looking for people that says, this is an issue, this is an area that needs to be solved or looked at. There's a bunch of engineers and people that can help out. And we're getting better at that because of the communication and meetups like this, is to see how we can all work together and collaborate. Wearable computing. I don't know if you follow this guy, Steve Mann. He's out of Canada. I'm from Canada. We won a gold medal against uh, in hockey today in the Olympics, so I'm very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> and you can all have Justin Bieber, so we'll just put it that way. That was a joke that we had over here. Now, Steve Mann's been looking at this for 30 years, so this isn't new stuff. Everything that you're seeing, the watches, the wearables, the glasses, this isn't new. The trajectory is happening and it's becoming commonplace. We're seeing it in movies, but we're also seeing it in commercials. We're seeing it with people. We have people that are walking around the glass and it's becoming public knowledge that this is coming around. Artificial intelligence. 
Jeopardy, I don't know if you people know Jeopardy and Watson and the intelligence, you know, we're starting to get to the capacity again. Mass market people are understanding, wow, there's computing power that's smarter than the human brain and what's gonna happen to that? Fascinating, but where's it gonna go? How do we pull it all together? 3D printing, I don't know if you've seen this, but the ear being printed, that is a functioning ear with 3D printing. Like very phenomenal capabilities that's happening in the internet of people and things and everything coming together. And then you have the internet of everything. We are gonna be touching everything. And the people in this room, the reason why this is a full house, and it's great to have a full house, is because we know it. It's in our gut. We know that every fundamental fabric of our life is gonna be touched by this IP capability, or this data capability. Nanotechnology, Have anybody ever seen this fascinating video that was put together by IBM, a boy and his atom? Moving molecules and atom size capabilities to that point of creating media and new media, new areas to explore. Quantum computing. This is the size of a beryllium, beryllium atom. I don't know what that is, right? But it's an atom size piece, which stores three qubits. Three qubits to the power of the bit to the p bit to the qubit is a phenomenal amount of processing power and the power, processing power to harness and take that energy and to think how we can build with everything coming together in the building blocks and bio life sciences. I just use this one as an example, the implantable tattoo that's going on because it gave some great indicators to what people are looking at and we can see pills and we said digestibles and there's a whole new economy that's coming out and no new evolutionary state that is gonna form body area networks. Trying to blow your mind body area networks. We're gonna be connected with IP and it's happening right now. It's available right now if you wanted to experiment, if you wanted to get there and want to leap ahead to 2020, 2040 and start that progress now. To bring together the internet of people. The internet of people is taking wearable technology, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, internet of everything, nanotechnology, quantum computing, bio life sciences, and putting it to the point that it becomes part of the periodic table. <laughs> Am I having fun yet or what? So can you take a look at that point? And you have the web server capabilities to that nanoscale environment. Just blow your mind and think of what you can do in the fabrics of life, and the fabrics of the world, and it's all gonna be ours to play with, and ours to be worked with, and it's a sandbox in the true sense of sand. Natural evolution through media, communications, and commerce. It's not that cumbersome or difficult for us to comprehend on how we can take this computing processing power that's gonna be embedded in all of us and embodied with us to now make it part of our life, make it a natural part of our life. Nano ability, I predict telepathy and teleportation will be, will be possible by the year 2020. In commonplace, by 2040, when my daughter hits, what is that, 30 or 40? I forget, <laughs> I should know these things. It should be possible. Now telepathy is not out of this out of this world. Just at the end of last month, uh, the end of the year, monkey moves hand a paralyzed primate through telepathy. So this monkey moved through a controlled state. This other monkey's paralyzed arm in a virtual state through mind telepathy. Augmented, of course. Teleportation. I don't know if you've seen this. This is Tupac. He played at uh, Coachella. So when Tupac, unfortunately he passed away, artist is always terrible, but this was a live performance to the point of so, such a realistic state that if we take things that we know that are obvious and that are here today and project it out, there's nothing wrong with teleportation happening. Our physical avatar, our physical state may be private to us, but we're gonna have virtual states and virtual capabilities in the next 20 to 40 years. This was a video, so imagine the possibilities. This was a nano picture of a nanotechnology sphere and an engine actually working within a body. Um, that was an animated gift that I couldn't pull together. So think about the possibilities. You're here to go and get to the next evolution of what you would like on the IOT. Now of the IOP, I'd like to thank you for your time. And enjoy the night and thank you very much, Mark. Any questions? Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> You're more than welcome.
no telepathical questions. No, wait a second. I sent. I I think I'm here. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yes. I'm really curious about teletransportation. I understand telepathy, but teletransportation, how do you see that? Well, look at 3D printing, right? So if I can print a human ear, and it doesn't have to be physically right in the same area that I am right now. And if I could take, you know, what we're doing with mobile communications right now, I can send you an SMS, or I can use my Google Glass and send you, or I can use a, a wearable computing and send you a message. Well, if it's further, you know, I'm going to say implanted or part of me that I control, then why can't I make that ear communicate, or that mouth, or that voice, or that body act as I am when I'm not there? Does that make? There's some logic there, isn't there? <laughs> well, it's telecopying. I'd like to start with telecopying, but but again, if you go to the next evolution, why not? Right? I don't know why not. I'm just trying to throw it out there. I don't have the. I wish I can foresee the future. I don't know, but. Um, the hell? Yes? Yeah, so more on this idea of transporting yourself into remote places. Is it, is it a bit like one possibility if you send a virtual avatar and people who are wearing the right kind of eyes or a headset can actually see you as if you'd appeared in the other room? So you, in this case, you wouldn't necessarily physically be there, but for all intents and purposes, people can see you and you can bring up shadows. I think some of the, the physics and the maths of this is what we already. Yes, both the memories with Maya written by something that you feel you've got to be the client of Sousa, who, who takes this uh, quite a lot of my Is that what you've got in mind, or is you actually transporting yourself rather than... Uh, it's a virtual state. So the virtual state, you're starting to get into the virtual sense. Um, I don't know, there's a, IBM put on a great series of videos the next five years. And if you go and search this next five years, five and five, you know, they're talking about scent. So I can feel scent. I can start getting scent. I can start getting touch. I can start getting these 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 augmented uh, 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 lifetime experiences. However, it is a virtual state. So it is an avatar state, if you want to use those terms. But I'm just going to say it could be you. I don't know multiple of use, maybe one at a time. But you again managing that state versus you're doing it through augmented reality and screens right now. Just project 20 years, 40 years out. That's all I'm playing with here. I'm not trying to say the reality of it. Yes. Well, thank you again. Enjoy the night. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you for coming. Uh, it was a great uh, yeah, event. We have these codes here from the Week Jam. And uh, we have uh, a lot of beers, please. Uh, you have to drink all the beers and eat all the food sponsored by Intel and our Trek. And after that, probably we will move to the Sunday Mobile. Thank you.